So in this episode of DIY Smart Home, we got the wiring done and we're ready to install the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's go get Hass.io. Well, wait, is it maybe Home Assistant now? I don't know. Let's go get an HA installed and get it done. Let's go check it out. So of course how things change with all doing videos and whatnot and guides. Well, the developers of Home Assistant decided that we're not gonna call things HASIO anymore and maybe try to end some of the confusion or maybe add additional confusion. Well, whatever it might be, we're just gonna continue on and still just call it straight up Home Assistant just to keep things easy. So the Home Assistant group of developers really couldn't make this much simpler, especially if you're using, say, Raspberry Pi. So to jump on in to the getting started guide, we are using the Raspberry Pi 4. As we mentioned before, if you are installing this, say, on Linux or a Docker installation or whatnot, you can probably skip this part and go jump straight to the onboarding. We will leave the timestamps down below in the description of the video if you'd like to do that. But for the people that are just starting out, let's go ahead and jump in and download our image for the Raspberry Pi. So first we'll go to your device and we are gonna use the Raspberry Pi 4. If you do have the Raspberry Pi 3, those links are here, but we are using the Raspberry Pi 32-bit and we will download that image. So just simply click on the link and it will download the image down to your hard drive. If you don't already have the Etcher program installed, you will need to download and also install Etcher as well. It's really simple to do, just click the download button and run through your typical installation. So for the SD card, I would recommend a endurance or say an industrial or some type of different SD card. They do give you a little better longevity with all the writes needed for HASIO or Home Assistant or whatever you may be calling it these days. And looking at things during the recording of this video, probably want to get, say, a 64 gig as well. That just gives you a little more room to get things done. But 32 gig like we have here on hand will work as well. So, of course, you're going to need an adapter of some sort. We are using a little micro SD card adapter that does go to a USB port. Now, some computers, laptops, etc. may have the full SD card adapter slot and just use that to flash and you can use whatever it might be that you need. So once you get the micro SD card attached to your computer, pull up Etcher, then go through and pick the image you just downloaded. No need to unzip it or whatnot, just select it. Make sure your micro SD card is picked and then hit the flash button and then hurry up and wait. You may have to accept a prompt here or there saying yes, you do want to write, etc. But just follow on through and let it write. Once it's finished, go ahead and eject the SD card and get ready. We're going to put it in the Raspberry Pi. So we are using the FLIRT case on our Raspberry Pi 4. It's a great little case. It does actually have a block that comes down and touches the processor. That way this entire case becomes the heat sink. There's no moving parts to it and nothing to get clogged, etc., and does a great job in getting rid of the heat. So simply take the micro SD card and we'll put it in the slot in the bottom. And that's it. And let's power this thing up and connect it to Ethernet. So once you do connect it up to your network and apply power to it, give it a few minutes. They do say about 20 minutes, but especially with the Raspberry Pi 4, it does not take that long. But go ahead, give it 10, 15 minutes, whatever it might be, and then come back. And then we're going to try to connect using the hasio.local address. Now, if you don't get a web page that pulls up, you will need to go to your router and look through, say, attached devices or DHCP and find a host name of hasio. And then you will need to browse to that IP with the port 8123 as shown here. So this is the page that will show as it is preparing your Home Assistant install. And definitely follow some of the stuff they show in the page, such as if you have iOS or you say you have an Android, definitely go install those applications and get things ready because we will be using those. 
So we're going to let this install and we'll come back and we'll jump into the onboarding. And if you get bored, go ahead and check out some of our other videos and maybe you can get some ideas and jump ahead. Or if you want to just come goof off, you can hang out with us in Discord while your Home Assistant install is completing. You can find all the links and everything else down in the description of the video down below. And if you're really an advanced user, you're probably already making your own devices and boards and everything else. Well, if you need a manufacturer to make those boards for you, definitely check out PCBWay. They're always got some specials, some deals and stuff going on from time to time. So if you want some high quality PCBs sent straight to your door, definitely go check out their website. There's tons of projects and products to go dig through. And by then, your Home Assistant install will be completed. So go check them out, PCBWay. So once it's ready, you should get the onboarding screen and ready to get started. Let's go ahead and put in the name, we'll put the username and then the password. We hit create account, the DIY home. And you may be thinking, well, why do we need to know where our location is at? Well, with a lot of different sensors, such as knowing the sun and the where that's below the horizon or above the horizon, you definitely want to put your location in. You don't have to get it exactly correct if you don't want to. Just put it in the general area. Now, if you are wanting to do some presence detection later, you probably would want to put it exactly on your home. But that information will be private just for you. So we're going to zoom way out and get on the other side of the pond. And we'll go ahead and double click. So for the time zone, we are central time. And we'll go ahead and pick the Imperial and next. Now, if you did have some additional services that were discovered, they will be here and you can set those up if you like. So that's it, really, the system is stood up and ready to go. And now you're ready to customize it for all the different services you'd like to put into Home Assistant. So we're gonna go over a couple of them and we'll do some add-on installs that are really simple to do. So first you wanna go to Hass.io and you'll want to go to the add-on store. Now you're welcome to dig through a bunch of the different ones that you'd like to install, but we're gonna install some pretty standard ones here. We're gonna do the configurator. We'll go ahead and hit install. And some add-ons, they do take a little time to install, so be patient. But of course, in the video, we're going to edit that out for you so you can see exactly how to install them. So if you're following along, you may want to use that pause button. And with most add-ons, you do want to scroll down and do read the installation and see everything you need to do for all the install. So once it's installed, typical thing, we're going to do the start. We do want to start this one on boot. We'll leave it auto update as off for now. And we will want to show this one in the sidebar. That way it makes it real simple to jump in and edit your configuration files. We'll go ahead and install the Mosquito Broker, which is also referred to as MQTT, which we're going to use pretty heavily in this home. So we'll jump through and install a bunch of them, and then we'll get to the configuration. And now that we have our typical add-ons installed, let's go ahead and configure them. So on the Mosquito Broker, you don't have to go ahead and put in a user ID and password as they do have the ability to use a user that you could add to Home Assistant itself. But one thing I don't like about doing that is if you do put in a user ID and password to Home Assistant, well, that's just another user that can log in. And you're putting that ID and password in various other devices around. And I just don't really like that hanging around. So I like to put in kind of a generic user ID and password since it is all local on my network, but it can't log into Home Assistant itself. And if you do want to do this in yours, of course, again, you don't have to do this. I will leave the example configuration on a blog post for this video down in the description. So I'm scrolling all the way down and going to the config and I'm going to paste it over this one here. And we're just hard coding in a username of DIY MQTT and a password of MQTT DIY. And of course you can change yours to what you want. So we'll go ahead and hit save and we'll go ahead and hit restart. And that just restarts the mosquito broker itself. You may be wondering why, what's this mosquito broker? What are we setting up here? Well, it's just a real simple communications protocol that's going to be used with Tasmodo and Home Assistant to turn your lights and switches and various other devices on and off. 
So scrolling on down and we'll get to the log and hit refresh and you can see it started up just fine. So configurator started, that's what the little green icons are for SSH server. You have the option of adding in your own key, but again, this is all gonna be local for us. We're just gonna go ahead and put in a password and not follow the rules of what they recommend. But when if I always follow the rules on what's recommended. So put in a super secret password. Don't put that one. We'll hit save and then we'll hit start. Back to HASIO and we'll go to node red and just gonna work through each one and see what is needed for the installation. So they don't have the instructions. You can go up here and go to the visit node red page. And if you don't feel like reading through the instructions, like I normally don't, I just, just go ahead and just try to boss hog through things and see what's wrong. So it looks like they has the SSL. We're not gonna use SSL since this is a local only. We're not exposing this out past our firewall, which is I would not do by the way with your home assistant. So we'll try and start it up again. So it looks like we're missing the credential secret. And we'll go ahead and put in that credential secret up here. Super secret. And of course you're not gonna put that. Then hit save and we'll hit restart. And we'll scroll on down to the bottom again and see if it does start this time. Hit refresh. And it looks like we're starting. And we didn't have to read the docs, right? But of course, if you are wanting to use SSL and everything else, you probably want to jump into the docs and use that. So we'll go to the Samba share. And we will need to put in a username and password. And we've got Unify controller. I'll scroll down, see if there's anything we need to do. SSL true, we're not gonna be exposing this and using SSL locally. If you are, you'll need to put in your keys. Now one thing to note, if you are using the Unify controller for HASIO, there is an important setting that once you do the onboarding of the Unify controller or importing all your settings from whatever it might be, do make sure you read this part. I have found this an issue is go to the settings and you will need to put in the actual host name IP of your home assistant install itself because it'll default to trying to use that internal Docker container and your access points and devices will not adopt correctly. And for WireGuard, we're gonna set that one up later. So last but not least, once you do have Home Assistant stood up and you have all your little containers and add-ons and everything configured, well, go ahead and take a snapshot. A snapshot's gonna be a backup of the entire system. That way, if anything goes wrong or whatnot, you can just restore that snapshot. So it's real simple to do. Just head on over to the HASIO tab. Go to Snapshots. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll just say After Stand Up. It's going to be a full snapshot. Now, if you do want to encrypt that, you can do a password protection. Say if you're going to store that in some type of other cloud or whatever, because you will have other passwords stored in Home Assistant itself. And just hit the Create button. And give it a little bit. Sometimes it can take a little long to make a snapshot, depending on how much data you have stored out there. But not, that won't happen till later. Now don't leave it just on the Pi because that kind of defeats the purpose of making a backup because you just made a backup and you left it on the device. What you wanna do is click on Snapshots and hit this little download button right here and download that to your computer and put it in a safe place in case you do need it. So once it's downloaded, you'll see it download and that's it. In a later video, we'll cover on how to automate this process and push them out to the cloud. So speaking of the cloud, well, do you want to control this when you're not at home? Absolutely. Do you want a really easy way to do that and control your voice assistants? Well, let's go ahead and check out the integration to make it real simple to get things going with the cloud. So you'll go to configuration and you'll go to home assistant cloud. And by all means, do read all the screens if you are curious or you do have any reserves or you don't want to do this. Definitely check everything out and all the information for the Home Assistant Cloud. 
They do give you a free one month trial and currently it is $5 a month, but it does go back and support the development of this open source project. I personally use the Nabucasa Home Assistant Cloud. It works great. So go ahead and put in your email and password and we'll go ahead and start your one month trial. Now, once you sign in, you'll get your integrations for your various voice assistants that shall not be named as well as webhooks and your remote control. Simply go ahead and turn on remote control. Then you'll use your instance of your unique address that I've blurred out for the recording of this video. That's the address you'll put on your phone app and you can use in other browsers, etc. So you'll need to save that one. It's probably pretty difficult to type as well. And that's on purpose. And you'll still need your login ID and password to log into your own home assistant through that little portal. At this time, if you do have a voice assistant, go ahead and turn it on and follow through on how to activate it with whether you have Google or you do have the Amazon one, which we will get to a lot of this later, but it's real simple and you can jump ahead to it. So now that you've got a home assistant stood up and you can start digging through things, we've got a bunch of light switches we got to go install in this house. So in the meantime, Definitely go ahead and dig around in Home Assistant. Maybe you got some different devices that we don't have or different integrations you'd like to look through. And if you do end up breaking anything, well, of course, you can just restore that snapshot. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It definitely helps bring new projects and new videos to the channel each week. If you're not a subscriber, you know the drill. You should have hit that button already by now, right? Definitely hit that bell icon so you can catch our next video. And y'all take care. That's the part that takes a while. And if anybody has any Jeopardy music, we could cue it up right now. Oh, we get a copyright violation if we do that. I'm sure.